Bowsers, the original Xbox. Pull it out of the basement. We're going to clean this bad boy up, maybe change a couple capacitors, fan, and do a little bit of modifications. Stay tuned. What do you know? What do you do? What do you say, my YouTube viewers? Retro Pro Frank with another installment. Uh, first off, I want to apologize uh, about the quality of the video today. Um, the mic's not going to sound too good, and it's going to be a little shaky at some times, okay, guys? I don't have a pure professional setup for doing electronics, okay? You can see, well, why is the DVD drive missing? Well, it's because I already had this bad boy open, and um, I actually was planning out what exactly I want to do to this. Uh, while I had it open, I seen a couple things wrong that needed to be replaced. So let me show you what those are. Okay, so now that we have the cover off here, um, and I can't really even use a tripod for this, guys. I'm sorry, but uh, you can see the 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 inside of the um, Xbox, and you can see something that's a little bit uh, unusual, and that's that chip right here. Sorry about the lighting here. There you go. That chip right there is actually a hard mod, okay? You can see the little wire where they modded it, uh, they, they soldered it right there. And then this wire actually goes to one of these buttons here. Sorry, I can't really see while I'm doing this, but... Um, and this actually just, uh, you could just take it right off. And underneath there is a pinout that's been soldered in. So this is the old way of modding the Xboxes, okay? So I'm actually going to leave it in there. It has a switch for on and off, and it does work. So I'm just going to leave it. Um, it adds a little bit of nostalgia, I guess, to this. And it's working, so it's not causing any damage. Now, um, there's actually six different version Xboxes, okay? And there's a version 1.0, which is the first original, version 1.2. And then in 1.1 and 1.2 versions are very similar. Uh, the only difference is the 1.0 version has a fan here on the GPU here. So um, then there's a 1.3, 4, and 5 that are pretty much identical. It's just the only thing different is the actual chip back here. Okay. That chip. Okay. Yeah, there it is. That chip right there is the actual only real difference uh, between, I'm pretty sure, I might be mistaken, but from what I was reading last night, the only difference is uh, that chip right there, the video encoder there that they used, uh, they used a different manufacturer over the years, okay? So, uh, the 1.6, um, that was the latest release. Now, the way you can distinguish, you'll say, well, f well Frank, how do I tell the difference? Um, First off, the easiest way to tell the difference is when you look at the power supply here, okay, um, you see the wires coming off the, the power supply going into this strip here just like a computer. Now, if it's only a one single strip like this, it's either, either a version 1.0 or a version 1.1. See that strip there? Now, if there was a wire next to it, like if it was a double, like see how this for the controllers here are double? There's one on each side, a left and a right to them. If it was a double, it would be either version 1.3, 4, 5, or 6. Okay. Um, another way of telling some of the different versions of the Xbox is actually the clock capacitor here, which is notorious for going. Okay. Now, this is a version 1.1, and I'm actually pretty lucky that I found this version. But you see that capacitor right there? I colored it in with Sharpie. That's actually the clock capacitor. That's actually a super capacitor that they put in there. And these are notorious for blowing up, for leaking all over the board, all over the traces here, and causing some real uh, internal damage to your Xbox. So a lot of people remove this, okay? Because what happens is you turn your Xbox on, and what happens is you always get a date and time, and it never changes. No matter what you do, it's always asking you for date and time. It's because of this failed component here. Now, 1.6 version does not have this. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. They took it out, but so that's the bad capacitor. See how I colored it black? Okay. So while I was in here, um, besides noticing the um, 
actual hard mod that was done. I actually noticed that these uh, capacitors here, um, they look good now because I kind of clean them so if my camera ever focuses. There we go. Those capacitors there, the 1500 uh, microfarads at 6.3 volts, they were actually all leaking. You can still see some residue on it, but I did clean it. You see how they're like bulged and they're broken? Okay, so the, the unit still works, so that's a good sign, okay? But there was a little bit of humming going on. So I, I, went, I went out to uh, New Tech Electronics here in Hamilton, and I picked up some replacement uh, capacitors. Okay, now these are pretty much the same ratings. Now when replacing capacitors, you, the most important thing is the microfarads. Like, see how that says 1500, if I can ever get it to go. 1500 microfarads at 10 volts okay now, now you're saying Frank well they're not the same this is 1500 at 6.3 volts as long as the 1500 is the same like if it says let's say it said 800 or a thousand at 6.3 volts as long as the 800 is the same the voltage really doesn't matter as long as you don't go lower okay so for example you can put a 1500 microfarad capacitor at 10 volts to replace these and it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt anything at least I don't think it would um, as long as you don't go lower like you wouldn't want to put a 4.3 volt capacitor I'm gonna be replacing these uh, five capacitors there on the board uh, if you look here I do have a picture I'll, I'll let you guys see this so that's what they look like when I first originally opened this before I cleaned it all up um, so under these two heat sinks here okay so that's your CPU so that's your 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 chip that runs everything okay for the the, the computer because essentially this is a computer and this over here is your GPU okay so this handles all your processing and everything and this one handles all your graphics okay you can see these levers I actually put this one on backwards but it's not touching the fan so I'm gonna leave it you just pull this up and this pops right out this one same with this you pull it up you use a screwdriver down behind and this pops right up then you're gonna see the old residue on the bottom of the heat sink and you're gonna see the old residue on the actual processor what you want to do in this uh, case is grab yourself some um, q-tips and uh, I just used uh, uh, rubbing alcohol uh, is isopropyl alcohol 91 percent and uh, I cleaned up the um, the actual processor and the GPU. So the CPU and the GPU, I cleaned that completely. And I cleaned the actual bottom of the heat sinks as well. And I applied a new uh, thermal compound, okay? So this is one of the best thermal compounds on the market. So this is Arctic Silver, if my camera ever focuses, number five. So what this does is if you just put the heat sink on top of the CPU without this it doesn't really work that well when when you put it when you put a thermal compound in between this big aluminum block and the CPU it makes the processor underneath almost like a part of this okay so when it's cooling and, and, and blowing out the air it's almost like if it's cooling this it's cooling the processor as long as you have the paste in between okay and it's not an option some of these systems won't even run without a thermal paste in, in between and it does come from the factory but this Arctic Silver stuff here is the best uh, thermal compound you can buy on the market. It's a little bit expensive. It's about 10 bucks. But I do a lot of stuff with computers as well. So um, I've already used it. I had it laying around from a computer. Actually, an Xbox 360. They got rid of the Red Ring of Death. I had to go out and buy this. So you just put a little dab in the middle of each processor with the heat sinks off. And then you put it back down and put the locks on top. So... Uh, yesterday before I did that this whole thing was moving now because the uh, the compound the uh, thermal paste actually set up it's not moving now so so yeah I already we learned quite a bit about the original Xbox okay so you can tell what kind of version it is by the pins here okay if it's just a single pin or a double with a left and a right you know that this is one of the older ones man I really before I researched this I really thought that this was a version 1.0 and that's pretty much what everyone wants like that's the first original one and that's got the you know one of the best hard drives and um, one of the best uh, CD-ROMs I'm gonna show you what came with my version 2 I just said version 2 there but if this is a version 1.1 sorry so this is the CD drive that came with it there used to be a sticker on here that said Samsung 
So this was a Samsung drive. I removed the sticker because I'm going to be doing some modifications to this. So I needed the sticker off and cleaned it very well. Now for the hard drive that was in here. Okay, so that was the actual uh, hard drive, the first original hard drive that actually came with this unit. As you can tell, it's a Western Digital um, 8 gig hard drive, November 2012. Shows that it's, it's one of those old IDE hard drives. So if you ever want to upgrade the hard drive in your um, modded Xbox, you, you need an IDE drive. You can't use the new SATA connection. Um, there are some adapters and connectors, but they've been known to uh, catch fire. So I don't want to screw around with that. So we're just going to keep it simple here. Uh, we're going to use the original stock um, hard drive for now. Once I get it modded, I might upgrade it, but Western Digital, I just want to show you the drives that came in this uh, version 1.1 was a Samsung DVD drive and a Western Digital hard drive within and anyone who knows computers knows that Western Digital makes the best hard drives. I don't care who you are, you know, all computer people, people that like computer nerds and geeks and that, and people that repair and uh, they're really technical with computers, they know that Western Digital makes the best mechanical drives. Actually, it'd be cool to put an SSD in here, a solid state drive. That would be awesome. Um, they don't make them IDE though, but you, you might need some sort of a connector, but is it gonna catch fire? I don't know. But that would be an awesome video to make, actually, um, swapping this out for an SSD. Now, SSD is a solid state drive, so this thing spins. There's a platter, like a record that spins. SSD has no moving parts, which makes it a lot quicker. Like on my computer here, for example, here's my computer I use for video editing and stuff. Um, the SSD in here, it's a small one, but I, I have a big uh, two terabyte uh, deep deep um, storage. So, But once you put the SSD, it's like the boot times go from like a minute, minute and a half to like 10 seconds. It's crazy. So maybe someday I might look into that for now I'm not really worried too much about it so looking more at the version 1.1 1. Uh, 1 here you can see the power supply here is if it ever focuses it's a Fox link so that's uh, known to be a little bit better of a power supply too okay and uh, let's just look around the board here I noticed that this is red See, I have an extra one here pulled out. This one is actually pretty noisy. This was pulled out of my green transparent Xbox, and I traded it for a quieter one. But you can see how the one on the right on the version 1.1 is red, and the one on the left is white. Now, this came out of a version, I think, 1.5 or 1.4, but it's noisy, so it's uh, pretty much that's it. And it's just something else that I noticed. Another thing I noticed is um, it actually says this pulse jack here, which is really cool. I've, I've never seen that on any other Xbox except for the version 1.1. There's your IDE connection, and here's the mod chip that I'm going to leave in here. So that's enough of the babbling. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these capacitors. They're well overdue. Uh, I'll show you the picture if I haven't already. Uh, probably clean up this fan. It doesn't look too bad, but I mean, if you already got it open, like, look at that. Like, I just wiped it. It's really dusty, so I want to clean up all this kind of stuff. So we're going to pull the fan out. We're going to pull the motherboard out completely. Um, that might be a little bit of a hard issue with that, uh, mod chip. I might actually just remove the mod chip completely because you have to flash it and this is an older way of um, modding these Xboxes and if I do try to pull this out it's connected right here um, to the power button for some sort of a power and it's connected on the itty bittiest little trace like if my camera can even focus. See that little trace? Let's get even closer see how precise that is so I'm probably gonna leave a little bit of slack on that wire when I pull it out um, just if I ever want to revisit this or throw this back in I will so let's um, remove I'm gonna actually remove this uh, pin header here as well I might leave that in I don't know because the mod chips pretty much useless without it so maybe I can resell this uh, mod chip if anyone's looking for it yeah, we'll pull it out and, uh, yeah. So, 
we're going to pull out the, the motherboard and there's a bunch of torque screws here that you have to go around. Um, oh yeah, that's another thing. The um, version 1.6 motherboard has one less uh, motherboard fastener on it. Okay, so I just counted. So there's a total of 11 uh, motherboard mounting screws. You can see them there. Okay, so that just uses a, a torque 10 bit. So here's a torque bit there. See how it kind of looks like a star. So this is a T10 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's a T10. So I'm going to remove all that. I'm going to cut this wire right here. Okay, I might leave it just in case I want to rehook it up. You know what, I'm just going to leave it in. I'm not going to remove the, the pin header. I'll just leave it in. Uh, that's just going to add to it. So today, uh, again, for the 15th time, I'm going to be replacing the capacitors. I'm going to remove the whole entire board. We're going to clean the fan up. And I would really, honestly, I'd like to do a case mod. Maybe put a window here where you can see the CD spinning. But that involves quite a bit. You're going to have to uh, cut the actual um, case with a Dremel and uh, the actual drive here the DVD drive so yeah let's get started okay guys so I got the power board uh, unplugged and I just wanted to show you so the one on the right is uh, the version 1.0 and 1.1 the one on the left is what any other version would look like see so this is just an old power supply out of a Pentium 4 see how it's got a double roll so if your Xbox has a double roll like that, you know right off the bat that this is, a, is either a version 1.3, 4, 5, or 6. If your Xbox just has one line coming from the power supply, which is this big metal thing on the right, if it only has one line, it's either a version 1.0 or 1.1. Okay, so we got the board out, okay? And I think it's actually this screw right here on the board. If you're missing that screw, then you uh, have a version 1.6, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so here's the board, and I did notice that white chalky stuff all over here, down the board. That's actually the, the electrolyte inside of the capacitor. There's some here, actually, too. Inside of the capacitor that um, actually leaks out, and that's why we have to change these capacitors, okay? Because this is what happens now. This can actually damage the traces. But see all those lines on the board? Those are actual traces. So that uh, the electrolytic uh, fluid that leaked all over the board, it's known for actually disintegrating those uh, lines. So I'm going to clean uh, that all up with a Q-tip and some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol, sorry. Let's go clean those up, shall we? It seems to me on the other side that this capacitor started leaking as well. And I think a couple of these. Um, there's quite a bit of little capacitors on here. And these ones looked all, all okay. Yeah, there's no signs of leaking there. Now these capacitors are cheap. I think I paid a dollar twenty-five from a local store. If I really wanted to be cheap, I could have just bought them on eBay for. I could have got a bag of twenty of these for like two bucks. I looked at the capacitors on the other side. And I flipped it over to find the leads. See where they're circled? I usually circle them with a black sharpie just to see where they are. Okay, so these are the connections that we have to heat up with our solder gun. And then we're just going to wiggle them out from side to side as we're pulling it out. Uh, but what I like to do first is I like to actually add a little bit of solder. Now when adding a little bit of solder, what that does is it actually makes it a lot easier, believe it or not, to remove. I don't know what the science is behind it, but yeah, so that looks like a good shot there. I'm going to get some solder. There we go. And you guys are going to need this guy too, okay? I don't know if you guys can see it. So this is called a solder sucker, okay? So it sucks out the solder. They're like five bucks on eBay, okay, guys? <clears throat> so the way it works is you heat up the solder and then um, you, you heat up the solder and then you just suck it out with this guy okay it's like a plunger it's got a button okay so let's uh, let's add a little bit of solder to each one of these points just gonna add just a little bit just to make it easier to remove, believe it or not, it does. I don't know why, but I don't know the logic behind it. 
it's like when you add fresh solder it actually uh, makes it easier to remove okay alright okay almost out and that one's out and we're down to the last one now Sorry, it might not be the best shot. And there we have it. Here's our old ones. Okay. If you guys can see it, those are our old ones. We took all five out. And there you go. See, there's one, two, three, four, five. Those ones all you know I have the replacements for all five of those okay now see how they're white on the one side the white side is actually the negative and the way of telling okay so the way to tell on what's positive and what's negative see that stripe right there so that stripe is negative okay now see how that leg continues that stripe on the capacitor there's only one stripe on the capacitor and that's the negative leg okay see the shorter leg Another way is to remember which how how you know how to replace this negative and negative positive positive. And see how there's a shorter leg. The shorter leg, if it doesn't have that stripe, will always be negative. Always. This goes the same for LEDs as well. Shorter, less, negative. That's the way I remember it. I remember that less is negative. Okay. So I'm going to get all these guys ready, all five of them. I'm going to put it into its spot. I'm going to clean up all the pads, apply a little bit of flux, and uh, let's get this soldered back on. All right, so we've got the new capacitors in. They're not soldered. It was a bit of a trick getting the old uh, solder out. Sorry about the shaky camera again, guys. But you can see we've got some nice fresh capacitors in here ready to go for another 20 years like you see I didn't solder them so I am gonna solder them but once I put them through I like to bend these leads okay to hold them in close to the board so once I'm done soldering this I'm gonna trim all these little leads on here and I like to keep these feet because you never know when they come in handy okay so I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna solder them up and trim the feet start with this one if you want to get it nice and hot I'm just going to apply your solder, move to the next one, get it nice and hot, remove the gun. Make sure it's a nice connection. Put a little bit better there, right about there. Now you should be using flux. I'm completely out of flux, so I'm not going to be using flux. And you want to make sure that you get it only on where it's supposed to go. You don't want it to start, you know, soldering to any other traces or anything. You just want to heat the pad. This is kind of tricky with the camera. I'm trying to do this on camera, but it's a little bit tricky. And there you go. She's all soldered up. Maybe not the best job in the world, but let's just fix this one. new replacement caps you want a really um, a sharp tip for that too eh? like your, your solder tip wants you know it should be sharp so I want seeing one guy bend these back and forth over and over but that's kind of a butcher way let's get some side cutters in here and let's um give them a little snip 
and I'll bend the rest of the way. And I like to keep these feet too. Okay, so this should definitely help the little humming issue that this thing had. When you do this, you want to make sure that you don't um, scratch the board with your uh, snippers because you could take out traces. So you want to do it very gently. You just want to keep on watching what you're doing. Normally it's better just to have them up like that and then kind of take it out like that. I'm waiting on a bunch of uh, stuff from China, so... So then, this is the way it's got to be. Got a bunch of supplies coming from China. There you go. Let's take a look at her. And there she is, right there. Those five. Nice and sturdy. Okay, and they even look better too. Not like anyone's ever going to see the inside, but there's the job there, guys. Nice new capacitors. Let's uh, put this back into the case. Um, actually, let's pull out the fan. We'll clean the fan next. Okay, so I popped the fan out. This is one that's uh, came out of the one that I'm working on. And you can see how that's so thick. Remember the uh, the extra I had? If you look at them, they're like look at the one on the right. Like, look how much beefier that is. See, that's the thing about the version uh, 1.0 and 1.1. They're pretty similar. Like this is, uh, I don't know, this is out of a uh, 1.34 or 5 or 6, I don't know. But this one over here is out of a version 1.1. got screws flying around all over the place. Okay, so we're going to clean this up. But like you see that center? NMB. Oh. You see that, how that looks there? That's a... Uh, like that's a that's a lot nicer, beefier fan. Like look at that. Sorry guys, the camera angle's off. I'm waiting for some stuff to come, so. But like look at the difference there. Like yeah, these blades, you know, there's more of them, but they're a lot thinner. These ones are a lot thicker. And they actually feel like they're steel. Like they're not steel, but like this one, you can see the weight on that. Let's check the weight. All right, this is in kilograms. Let's go to units, ounces. That's in grams. So let's check the weight of the uh, the older version one. Okay, so that's 63 grams. Just so you guys know, like, like that's 78, and I can feel the difference just holding it. You know what I mean? Like it just it just feels a lot more well you know designed, well put together. 78 grams and that's 61 so you know it's an extra 10 grams 12 grams heavier the design of the uh, the airflow I guess they were worried about maybe over overheating issues you know almost how like they have on the 360 so anyway so we're gonna clean this one up um, let's turn this off let's get this out of here we're gonna we're gonna clean this guy up right here before we put it back into the uh, the unit, just to give it a you know good cleaning. There's not much you can do to these anyway. So what I like to do is I like to get Q-tips. All right, it's a bunch of Q-tips. And now the first couple times you go over, it's going to look clean. Then it's going to dry, and it won't be clean. Believe me. Okay, and guys, I'm not wearing no mic uh, doing all this back and forth over here. It drives me nuts. So. You just want to clean it right, get the get the Q-tip, get inside, everywhere. I like to do the sides, whatever, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, you know. 
just clean it up because you can see it from the other side too, eh? You can see uh, what kind of condition the Xbox is in if, you know. So, the first cleaning, don't try to make it perfect because you're not going to be able to get it perfect. Grab these guys, throw them in there. You know, go around. You know, that's just the first clean. Okay. You want to get the fans, you can get the fans from this side. It's a little bit easier. It's kind of hard for me to do this, guys. I'm not even lying, but, you know. Just want to clean them all up, guys, you know. Oh, look at that. What's that say? What does that say? What is that? So, NMB is obviously a manufacturer. Model number you guys can make it out if you guys really want that information just uh, pause the video and take a screenshot of it you know you'll get it anyway <clears throat> 12 volts DC 6 six point two four amps what's this one say um, 12 volts DC doesn't show amps just shows watts 3.2 watts so whatever that means okay and we're just going to continue to clean this. Uh, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, first clean's done. Um, you're going to have to clean these things twice. I don't know what it is about these fans out of these systems. You, you, they're just so dirty, you know. Uh, so we're going to give it a couple different cleans here. Okay? That's the first one. Oh, and guys, I forgot to say, uh, if you guys want to blow stuff off with compressed air, that's fine. But if you're going to blow the fan out, like so let's say you don't want to go to this extent, you just want to blow it out, you should really like wedge something in there if you're not going to take it apart, if you want to clean the fan or whatever. Uh, wedge something in there so it doesn't move, so when you spray it, 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 won't, it doesn't rotate the fan. Because right now when you're rotating the fan, that actually creates uh, hydro, electricity. Not hydro, it, cre it creates electricity when this is actually spinning even though it's not hooked up to nothing and that, and that electricity can feed back into the board and somehow screw it up. I just, I'm pretty sure it won't but I just know that you know it's not good. They actually do create electricity. Freaking hilarious. See that uh, how it's white there? It was black like almost like they painted it or something. Anyway I took it off but this is the second clean so that's that's pretty much it. I'm not doing any more after that. There's a second clean there, and now it looks like it can get thrown back into the system. So before you put the fan back in, you want to like clean up all this area on the RF shield here, okay? And then uh, I'm going to throw in the fan, and I'm also going to throw in the motherboard. Okay, so we got the board back in. I'll put the fan back in. Everything's screwed in, fit like a glove, got our new capacitors in, ready to rock and roll. I do know, like, I should remove this clock capacitor, super capacitor, but you know what? I think I'm going to end up going back and maybe doing the rest of them. There's, there's about 17 more, so, <laughs> you know, it's just, they're all, if they were all the same size, yeah, okay, yeah, I'd hit it all in one shot. You know, just order a bag off eBay. But these are a bunch of different sizes. But it could be useful to keep some of that stuff around. Let's say, like, say I only need three of these guys. Let's say I order 20 in from eBay for three bucks. Use the three, keep the 20 in the bag. It'd still be cheaper anyway than buying it locally. But uh, the locally is good if you're in a bind. Okay, so that looks pretty clean. They all look straight. All right. I put that behind. You know what? I'm gonna start doing that now. You know that that should be a way of uh, people knowing that someone's been there and someone's reapplied thermal paste without writing something by putting that backwards. You know, I'm gonna start doing that actually. So any ones that I replace the thermal paste in, I'm gonna put them backwards so p other people will know. You know, I think that that's a pretty smart idea without writing. You know, a service date and what you did on the inside of it anyway so let's move on to I'm gonna case mod it so we're gonna window mod the uh, 
the Xbox and hopefully throw some LEDs in there. Uh, maybe some green ones, keep it the green theme, the original kind, I don't know, maybe blue, who knows. Okay, so working on the window mod now. So I laid down some tape, tried to go with the design, trying to keep it even because essentially I'm just going to cut this out, put a piece of plexiglass from the inside. It'll look cool when it's done. I don't know what angle to go with if I should go with that bottom one. See, it's very faint. You can barely see it there. See that? If I should go with that one. If I go with the bottom one, should I cut this one going up to, you know, it's, should I make this straight, should I make this round, a lot of thinking, so, anyway, let's, uh, I'm going to start chipping at it and let's see what we come up with here. Hey guys, so I just went with something easy, something triangular, I still got to clean it up, all the burrs are still on it over here, I don't feel like flicking that back into the Xbox, yeah, I'm just going to go with that style, okay. Um, now that this is open, I'm going to actually take a pen and just mark the actual DVD drive of where I have to cut the DVD drive out. But I do need this center ring in. My goal here is so that we can see the CD spinning um, inside. Hey guys, there you go. Sorry about the bad lighting, but there's the Xbox uh, window cut. Right here, it's smoothed off. I spent a little bit of time on it. This one took a little bit longer. There's the cover for the DVD. And you want to leave that middle piece in because on the other side you can see that's actually a magnet that holds um, the disc. So yeah, I'm going to spray paint this black. Throw it in there and that should be the end of the mod. Pretty much. Just got to get a piece of plexiglass for this guy right here. And then uh, I'll see you in a bit once I get that all done. Okay, so we got it all back together, got that spray painted, hard drives in, everything's in. Uh, still got to put the plexiglass though, there's no plexiglass there. I'd like to clean this edge up a little bit, but this is what I can do right now. So, uh, yeah, you're probably going to see a video, it's going to feel like it's continuing, but it's going to be a couple days. So, uh, anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's where I'm at right now. The lighting in here is atrocious, but uh, so I just clean up the uh, the area of the window. I just uh, give it a nice fine sand, and what I did was I got a piece of plexiglass there. Now it's a little bit bigger than what I need. I'll probably be able to do this mod maybe fucking five or six times, part of my French, but uh, should be able to do it a couple times. So now, how do you get that plexi into here? That's the question. Okay, so. Uh, I seen a video on YouTube where the guy like just keeps cutting it and cutting it and cutting it and it's like a hacked up piece. It looks friggin' disgusting. You know, I wouldn't put my name on that, you know. So uh, the best way to do this is what I found was I took a piece of paper. I'm just going to show you. This isn't going to be. I took a full sheet, pretend it's a full sheet, and I just flipped it over. Right? And see like that? And then I just took the pen and I just traced inside all the way around. That's supposed to stay there if it's a full sheet. I trace it inside all the way around. But when you do that, you can't cut it that size or else the plexiglass is going to fall through. So you want it to be a little bit bigger. So I took the sizes. See the lines, those uh, pen lines? Those are the inside sizes. And I just added about a quarter inch on there all the way around, maybe about three-eighths. Okay? And, and I actually uh, 
fit it into place, and I think it goes like this. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, that's it right there. There you go. I fit it into place, and it fits really, really well. Okay. Uh, so now I just have to notch around that post, and and you kind of need that post in, okay? Because that's uh, the middle screws on the bottom of the Xbox. So I don't suggest you know grinding any of this out. Not the posts anyway that hold the screws. Okay. So now. All I have to do to get this out of plexiglass is to actually put it on the plexiglass like this, square it up, and then just trace it. Once I trace the outside of it, I'll mark it with a Sharpie, and I trace it, I'll just cut it the exact same with a Dremel, or you can use a jigsaw. Or If you're cutting plexi, this is uh, Lexan, it's a little bit more durable, so it can take that kind of stuff. But if you're cutting plexi, I don't suggest using... Um, a jigsaw because it might break. You're gonna have to score it. Just uh, go on YouTube and type out uh, how to cut plexiglass, okay? And uh, yeah, so once you get this size, we're gonna cut this size right now. We're gonna put it into place. Uh, I'm gonna clean up this case because it looks a little bit crusty on the inside there. You can see it's like it's not what it can be, you know. There's there's a lot of dirt. The camera's not pick, picking it up because the uh, the lighting is pretty terrible in there so uh, I'm gonna do that I'm gonna get the uh, plexiglass cut we're gonna throw it in we're gonna clean the hell out of this case and make it shine real good and then I want to uh, add some green LEDs now the reason why I'm going with green is because you guys know that Xbox is green right like their dashboards green while well, the official dashboard is green and you know the emblems green and the light in the front the round lights green so I figured you know what I was thinking about changing it to blue but if I wanted to change it to blue I'd have to change the emblem I'd have to change the LEDs which I might do later on in the future but for this mod um, I'm just gonna keep the whole Xbox green and I do have some green LEDs so we'll be doing that today too so I'm gonna cut up the plexi throw it in uh, clean up the case, actually clean up the case before I throw the plexi in. I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in. The same guy who I seen on a YouTube video cutting like the hell out of this plexi and it looks like shit on the other side. Like, guys, I know you don't see this side. Okay, oh, and just a little bit of a tip here. You got to remove the uh, steel cage on the inside here. That just pops out. It's just held in by these little rivets here. And you just pop it up with a screwdriver. But the guy I seen, he hacked the shit out of it. Like, there's there's no straight angles at all. And, like, you know, I put pride into the stuff I do, guys. Okay, just make a template. It, it takes two seconds to do. You know, don't hack the shit out of something. That's gross, okay? So we're going to clean it up first. Uh, I'm going to cut out our uh, from our template. We're going to cut out our plexiglass that we need. I'm going to put it in. And, uh, yeah, we're going to, obviously, we're going to hook up some lights, those green lights that I mentioned. I hope that they're the right kinds. I don't know. They're just plain LEDs, but we're going to run some wires along the top of the case, and we're going to have to put some kind of connection where we can unplug it if we, I get into any further modding, like if I want to upgrade the hard drive or anything like that. So, yeah, so that's where we're at right now, and, uh, yeah, let me get that done. Give me a sec. Okay, so I got it all back together, got her cleaned up, uh pretty nice lines you know like i know the glass is strong that's really strong it's not no foam tape hole in it let's just turn them into media centers like there's enough of them around because <laughs> like seriously the games the game list is pretty decent you know so anyway let's open it up and take a look okay let's take her off okay so there's the the front of it hope you guys can see that good Put it down a bit. There you go. So there's the front of it. Okay, and you can see how I actually attached it. I'll try to get this a little closer for you guys. Okay. So it's not all like hacked to shit on the inside. Okay, guys, take an extra two minutes and do it nice, all right? Don't use no uh, two-way tape that if you press on, it's going to... Like, I'm pressing on this right now, okay, guys? And I'm a big guy. It's not budging. Don't use that two-way tape bullshit on these little pieces over here, man. That's going to get hot. It's going to friggin' dry up over time and fall through once you put a DVD on it or something. So Okay, so that's out. Um, I just notched the glass around this a little bit. I wanted to give myself a little bit more meat. See that little notch right there? Had to take out uh, the RF shield over here. So this is the RF shield. 
So this sits inside, right? I can't really even hold this, but this sits inside like that, right? So this is like, I guess this is supposed to stop like radio waves or some kind of bullshit. I don't even know, but it's not needed, man. Come on. So that one's out of there and uh, you can see there. So now I got to kind of figure out how to lay my lights out. Um, if you look at the Xbox, there's the Xbox there. Actually, I'll let you take a look at the inside a little bit more. So I kind of want to keep that in there, you know. I, I was thinking about painting it, you know, to paint that um, black, but I don't know. I would have had to tape it all off, and it's like, how long do I really want to keep this hard drive anyway, right? So, but yeah, that's the way I cut it, okay? I could have probably just took that angle out completely. I don't even know why I left it, but when it's all put together... You don't even see, like, you don't see the metal at all. I, I made sure it was back, and you can see the circle there. And that was all done with just a Dremel. So I used uh, just a steel cutting bit all around here. And uh, gave it a nice couple good thick paints, uh, coats of paint. Some good uh, steel paint. And she feels nice. She feels nice and smooth. How do you hook up lights? Okay, well, that's a good question, okay? So you, you, have, you have this. As soon as you open it up, you see over here, you pull this out. This is out of the hard drive. First, got to pull out the uh, ID, which I already pulled it out. Okay. And you have this for power, or you have one from the DVD. But this is, like, pretty much a standard Molex. Like, these are computer wires. Like, for real. Like, I just built the computer, so... These, these wires right here, you, you buy them to build computers. So this is, like, Molex to Molex kind of wires. And so this, this has a similar wire, obviously it's on an angle, so it can reach in there. So I figured, how am I going to hook up lights? So there's two different kinds of LEDs you can get. You can get 12-volt LEDs that run off straight 12 volts. They're a little bit more expensive. Or you can get, um, you know, just 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 cheap, your cheapest plain Jane. Like, you can get 5-volt LEDs that you don't need a resistor. they got built-in resistors or whatever. You, you can get the cheapest shit off China, eBay, you know what I mean? You can get the cheapest one there, blue, any color you want, purple, orange, whatever colors of the rainbow you want. You can get like a pack of 20, 30, 50 of those for like maybe 3 bucks, right? But you have to add a resistor to these ones, okay? Because they're, they're like 3 volts, okay? And LEDs is really sensitive, all right? It's not like, you know, um, how to put it? Okay, there's a motor in here. It's not like this motor, you put 5 volts into this motor, and it spins a certain speed, or the fan, you know what I mean? It spins a certain feet, speed, um, and if you pump it up to 6 or 7 volts, it will just spin faster kind of deal, right? It can compensate. LEDs aren't like that. If it's like a, a half a volt off, they can blow. I don't know the exact, you know, mathematic calculation, you know, but it's it's something really small. Like, you can't pump a... 5 volts into a 3-volt uh, LED. You, you just can't. So, you know, they make the these these economical ones for about 3 bucks. You can buy these strips of LEDs. Yeah, I know what you guys are thinking. Get the strips, blah, blah, blah. blah. You know how much those things cost compared to, like, just single LEDs? If, if you can do the single LEDs, you know, yeah, well, it's, it, it's going to take a little bit more time because those strips, they're already attached, right? So if you want 3 LEDs, and you just want it to shine like this way, okay, yeah, you just put three right there, okay, done. You know, if you want to put one here, facing this way, one here, one here, or whatever you want to do, if you're doing the whole case, plexiglass, whatever the hell you're going to do, you know, you, you, you got like three or four, you know, that's an advantage and, and disadvantage altogether too. So basically, what I use, what I'm going to be using is, uh, let's just dig into some of the electrical things here. All right, so this is, here. Here's an LED right here, for example. Okay, this is this is three volts, and they're commonly they're, it goes on color, believe it or not. Like uh, it depends on everything, but I mean, like it, they have this chart on eBay with these LEDs that you know if they're red, they're this volt. If they're blue, they're this volt. And these are the resistors here. Like I think I got this whole strip of like a hundred for two bucks from China, man. You know, these are uh, some blue LEDs here. You know, they come in these nice little packages. you got to wait a month. You know, it's, it's best to have them already. But it's good to spend, you know, 50 bucks, 40 bucks on eBay knowing that stuff's coming, even if you don't have something going on, you know. And there's the resistors there. So 
what you would do is, you know, take an LED like this. For each LED you use, you got to use one of these resistors, okay? And if you notice, I don't know if you guys can see, because my camera is not the greatest, but one foot is longer than the other. See that? Now, this is a way of telling negative and positive your polarity is the shorter foot is always negative. Just remember that. Just like a capacitor, okay? So if you're short, you're less. You're negative. You're less, okay? Just think about it like that. It's a short leg. It's shorter. There's less of it, okay? So that's a negative, okay? So what you would do, and this is arguable, like a lot of people argue about this, whether or not to put the capacitor. Some people say uh, positive is the best to go on. Not the capacitor, sorry. And there's a little bit of argument, debate on whether or not the resistor uh, that resists the 5 volts, if you pull it off the 5 volt line, or if you pull it off the 12 volt line, um, it will drop the voltage down. That's what the resistor does. It, it resists, you know, the, the flow. And it burns it off in heat. So, you, you, you know, you, you would put this, you'd run it like that. You know, you'd have your resistor, and then you would have the positive soldered in, and then this would now be your your positive side of the lead, and then this would be your negative side without the resistor, okay? And you could put one, you know, here, if you want it here, or inside the DVD, like actually inside. Who knows, you can bend it out around and put it in the corner, whatever you, whatever you want to do, right? But that's how you do it. You can't just hook up an LED. There's different ohm resistors, and there's actually a calculator that you use. It's uh, on the internet. You just uh, it's got things called the ohms uh, calculator. You just Google that, and it'll tell you what what size resistor to use with one what size uh, LED that you use. Yeah, but Frank, where are you going with all this? You know, like okay, the LEDs. Okay, so what I'm getting at is, is this about the Molex here. Okay, so this is my idea. Get a Y splitter like this, okay? This is going to come in handy if you want to upgrade your hard drive down the road anyway, so it's better to have one of these ready, because if you're doing this kind of shit to your Xbox, you know, pretty much you're going to want to be doing more after in the future, right? So get one of these Y splitters, okay? There's only one of these coming off the main power supply here. So what I'm figuring is to go like this, plug it in like this, root this through, Now, if I got to incorporate, you know, cutting stuff or whatever, I don't mind too much, okay? And this guy, I might have to take the hard drive out first, or I can just bend it like crazy right there, Let's see if she fits. Okay, so I got it in, I just bent this like really hard on a 90, and it, and it actually went in. And what you can do is because Microsoft was so kind to leave a bunch of room back here, is you can just... Put all those wires in there, and then now, ta-da, you have an extra connector. That's a lot cleaner, in my opinion, if you're going to hook up LEDs, to use the other side, like let's say, if you wanted to use that, to power your LEDs. You would take one of these guys, oops, sorry, one of these guys, cut it off, okay, and then run your your wires that go to your LEDs from this connector that connects and slides and is made for connecting into the female end sometimes they're a bit of a bugger but there you go and there you go okay and then this can power your case not only that but there's a lot of slack here too so if you take the case off look at that there's like honestly I can, my, my camera can't even zoom out that much there's like honestly I don't know maybe two and a half feet now I'm gonna have to roll this all up again but you see what I'm saying so might as well, you know, make it look all neat. Maybe even throw a zip tie in there if you want. But there you go. There's the lead right there. And that would close perfectly just like that, the lid. So, And I'm pretty sure that's what the guys do anyway. So I'm going to have to look for one of these uh, Molex connectors. I'm going to take the uh, top of the lid here. Here it is. Okay. And I'm going to install um, some lights some LEDs, okay, El Cheapo, these are like 10 cents each, and they're very effective, maybe one here, okay, shooting this way, maybe one here shooting this way, and if I can do it, maybe one here shooting back in the direction of both of these, you know, like, so one there, one shoots here, and one shoots there, 
And that should really cover it. Or maybe I might just, you know, bend this up out of the case and focus it on the disc. Who knows? Let's just see how it looks. See, that's the thing about LEDs, too. When you start putting LEDs and stuff, you don't know where you're going to position it. You don't just want to start gluing shit down. You actually want to put it together and slide it in there and see what it looks like on this position or on this position. Or, you know, focusing it down more. Because, you know, some of these shoot a beam straight or some of them shoot them wide like a, you know, or some of them shoot them completely straight. So... It's uh, really the design of the LED, so you, you kind of want to fool, fool around with that. Alright, so the mod's all done. Plexiglass in, lights is in. Um, I already tested it, works great. I'm going to show you guys the way it looks when turn it on. Okay. So it gives you a nice clean shot into the disc tray. We'll open up the disc tray. Okay, so you can see inside, you can see the disc being delivered. Let me get a disc. Yeah, baby. All right, so we're taking the disc out. All right, so here goes the disc. It's a good game, actually. Let's take a look at the way it looks once it goes in. You can see it spinning up there, guys. Okay, so it's matching the uh, the green lights, matching everything's matching here. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much this mod. You know, I think it's pretty cool that you can see it uh, spin like that. You can see the disc, sorry, spin like that. Yeah, it didn't take that long. All you need is a little bit of patience, you know. But it just changes the whole look of the Xbox, eh, guys? So, you know, and it's nice strong plexiglass in there. That's not going nowhere. All right. Well, hey, guys, if you guys like this, uh, this Xbox, these mods, and the repairs I've done, give me a thumbs up uh, if you like it. Definitely subscribe to the channel for some new content that's going to be released. I like to release content when I have something to talk about or something cool that I'm doing and I want to show to people. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something. This is Retro Pro Frank, and I'm out. Guys, thanks for watching the video. If you guys like the video, go ahead and press the like button below. And uh, you guys can leave some comments uh, below in the comment section of the video. Please share this video on Facebook pages to your friends and family. As well as if you guys like this video, please subscribe. This is Retro Pro Frank. Thanks for watching. I'm out.